here in Kuwait, there's no Teslas. I know. I mean, there are still quite a lot of countries where you can't get them, right? And uh, it's a shame. But it is one of those moments when landline to mobile phones and then from heavy utilitarian mobile phones to smartphones. Um, same with computers, right? I, I grew up, we had what we call in France, the Minitel, which was, I mean, you have no idea. It was making beep, 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 beep every time it connected. And I, it was a crazy story. And, and there we are. So when you look back after a couple of decennies, you realize there were some key moments where, where technology and changes just happened decisively, right? Where you just know, okay, we've, this was a chapter, it's over, and there's a new chapter. And while I had six years of EV experience, even with that, that one test drive was just it. You just realized, my gosh, this is a computer on wheels. Sure enough, it's an yeah. EV, but there's there's so much more to it and this will change and we just have to sit it out. And uh, and I just said, you know what? I mean, I'm, I don't need money for the next 12 years. I'm still working. I'm having a day job. I, I love what I'm doing. So this is really for my retirement. 12 years, this company is going to, you know, and I had no, no clue about anything else. This was just about the car and the car going to change car industry forever. Obviously, this has been three years now. So I've been learning much more about Tesla and I'm even more convinced today. This daily and weekly and monthly noise that we all comment on is nothing else than noise. We just have to time, from time to time get back to that March 2020 conviction because that's what's really all about. The problem is with Kuwait, and I've met someone here who actually has a Tesla. And mm -hmm. he told me, if you're fueling from like, let's say from empty to full, it's about $20. Mm -hmm. The same amount where you supercharging network as mm -hmm. in, in back in Canada, when you go from empty to full or zero to hundred percent, it's around yeah. 20 bucks, which is still good. But he told me that when, when he uses his supercharger, or when he just uses a regular charger is about like 50 cents, 60 cents here. Mm. Oh, wow. And I'm just like, but that goes back and like, wait a minute. So if that's low and the government here is relying 60% of the entire GDP on oil, he said that Tesla coming to Kuwait is almost nearly an impossible thing because of mm. regulation with the government and, sure. you know, all, all this. And I'm just like, but like, you know, once you have a superior product and everyone is moving towards there, I mean, if you go to Dubai right now, 30 to 40% of all vehicles are all Teslas. And I'm, they're, I'm, and they're I'm, so much in advance. I always think that Dubai wants to be the first country to have full self-drive, just to have yes, a me too. for that. I'm, I'm, me I'm too. convinced me too. about that, <laughs> just because I think they just want to show the whole world. You, you can't get it done. You're so overregulated, but we can do it. And can you just imagine... What a situation it will be for Kuwait looking at Dubai, where there will be all these Tesla self-driving and they're still like, no, 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 we want, uh, we want our gas stations. Yeah. It's frustrating because now, because mm. I'm, I've been looking to see how I could get one here in Kuwait, but because I'm an expat here, we're not allowed to import cars. Yeah. Everything's so complicated and you know very well. So it's like, I have to like order it. And then I would, I would have to get a sponsor or a local here to make, to have it under their name and then for them to import yeah. it. And then if something goes wrong with the vehicle, I have to export it back to UAE. So it's yeah. like, is that really practical at the moment? Yeah. So crazy, right? I don't know. Move, I talk move to out of Kuwait. <laughs>